Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for the fourth and final webinar of the Public Makers Project. In the previous three webinars of the project, we discussed why open data is important. We got a glimpse on how to generate, use and manipulate open data and also we learned how to visualize open data in order to present them in a more appealing and meaningful way. So now let's assume that we have collected and processed our data. We have analyzed the needs of our community and we have come up with some solutions. How can we present these data needs and solutions to our audiences and to policymakers in order to persuade and motivate them? We believe that an effective way to do so is to organize an advocacy campaign on social media. So in this webinar, we are going to introduce you to a few social media storytelling techniques, as well as to a few tips and tricks that you need to keep in mind for your campaign to be successful. Starting with how to use social media for advocacy. Social media are a powerful tool to advocate for a cause, since they give us the opportunity to communicate information and points of view on specific subject matters and disseminate them further via our networks of friends and followers. However, providing information and arguments, as we say, the rational appeal, is not always enough to persuade other people to change their behavior, adopt new values or take action. In fact, it is not even enough to attract their attention to our posts and read them. Triggering feelings, on the other hand, the emotional appeal, is also very essential in an advocacy campaign on social media. And this is the point in which storytelling enters the stage. We tend to associate storytelling with literary works, but stories aren't found only in books. Storytelling is everywhere. It appears in every form of communication, from daily conversations to academic research papers. Storytelling is the process of using facts and narratives to communicate specific messages to specific audiences. And it can take the form of textual and visual content, as well as the form of actions. In any case, one common characteristic of all forms of storytelling is that it empowers readers, listeners or viewers to visualize vivid sensory elements of the story based on their own experiences and understandings. Storytelling has super powers, as we say, and this is what makes it a suitable technique for advocacy. It might seem impossible to narrate a story with social media posts and tweets that are supposed to be short, but it isn't. We can create and communicate powerful stories on social media platforms, regardless of their limitations, by taking advantage of their options and functionalities, for example. And in the following pages, we will present you some ways to do storytelling using the four most popular social media platforms. These are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Let's start with Facebook storytelling techniques. Facebook doesn't limit the number of words in a post, so we can write an entire story. Sometimes, instead of summarizing a story or just mentioning some key points, it's better to write longer Facebook posts since they tend to grab people's attention. In your posts, you can include data you have found or generated to persuade your audience. Facebook also offers you the possibility to share pictures and short videos that are going to be available for 24 hours. This is the stories function Facebook. With this option, you may post a series of short videos or pictures telling your story. You can also create a Facebook photo album. This is another way to tell a story. And we can repost the whole album on the news feed whenever we add new photos to it and potentially share it with more people. In the second Public Makers webinar, we have given you an overview of how you could use applications such as Canva to make your own data visualizations, manipulate your photos, add text, numbers, and build your own story. So you could use that. Of course, you can shoot a long Facebook video. Sometimes a collection of photos might not be sufficient to tell the whole story we have in mind. In such cases, we can consider shooting a video since Facebook can host videos up to 240 minutes long. In addition, it is useful to know that the Facebook news feed algorithm prioritizes longer videos to engage viewers. 
Now let's move on with the Instagram storytelling techniques. You can create a, narr a narrative with an Instagram caption. While a high quality image is important for an Instagram post, a captivating caption can help to complete the story we want to tell. You can also tell a visual story with an Instagram profile. A creative way to share a story on Instagram is to use several posts, for example, three, six, or nine separated images to create a huge image on an Instagram profile. When done well, for example, with the use of Breedmaker applications, this visual storytelling technique makes our Instagram profile look more enchanting and appealing to the viewers and simultaneously helps us to tell a captivating story. We can also curate user-generated content by sharing short stories from our followers through photos on our Instagram profile. Another way to curate user-generated content is to create a hashtag for a story that we want to tell. Encourage our followers to post a photo of this hashtag and repost a few of the best ones. This visual storytelling technique can also help us grow our number of followers and get to know people from our community. You can also create a short video. Instagram videos can only be up to 60 seconds long, but it doesn't matter. Constraints always trigger creativity and great stories can be told in seconds. As long as we stick to the point, one use one screen captions to help the, narr the narrative and text captions to expand the story. You can also use stories on Instagram as you use on Facebook. There is no limit to the number of Instagram stories you can post a day. So you can share quite a bit of visual content. Now moving on to the Twitter storytelling techniques. You can do a tweet storm. Tweet storm is a practice of sharing a story or a train of thought that is longer than 140 characters through a series of tweets in quick succession. Usually, these tweets start and end with a number to indicate the sequence of the tweets and are unified by hashtag. Also, they can be stringed together by simply replying to the previous tweet. You can also create a Twitter moment. According to Twitter, Twitter moments are curated stories about what's happening around the world powered by tweets. They're like tweet storms, but more beautiful and interactive. And Twitter provides actually instruction on how you can create and how you can find and interact with moments. Of course, you can use hashtags. Hashtags were created by Twitter. And these hashtags allow people to easily follow topics they're interested in. In addition, they can be used to tell and curate stories. We can create our own hashtag for the story we want to tell, but this doesn't mean that our hashtag has to go viral for our story to spread. It is enough for our followers to understand our message and purpose through the hashtag and use it in their own tweets. Of course, instead of creating our own hashtag, we can tap into a trending one to share our story. But again, it doesn't always have to be a popular hashtag. The most important thing is for the hashtag to be relevant and appropriate for our story. Twitter also provides tips and help with hashtags as well. Last but not least, we have the YouTube storytelling. You can create a YouTube channel or a playlist. Videos capture people's attention more than text and images. And they are the type of content that most people consume thoroughly. In order to tell stories, we can create a series of videos about whether whatever theme or subject we consider as interested for our viewers, or a series of video interviews with people from our community sharing their stories and experiences. If you have also design skills, you may include animated videos as well. The videos don't need to be too long, but they need to be of good quality. For the last part, we have some tips and tricks, things to consider before and during the advocacy campaign. Social media have been around for quite some time now and the majority of people know how to use them. After all, they are meant to be user-friendly. 
But organizing a social media advocacy campaign with the use of storytelling techniques is a much broader process than the updating of the social media profile or page. So before and during an advocacy campaign, we need to consider a few things. First of all, the time and purpose of the campaign. The first thing we need to think of and decide is the kind of campaign we are going to organize. For example, it, is it going to be a one-time or a recurring event, an ongoing fan page or a specific closed group? Facebook provides all these options, but this is not the case with the rest of the social media platforms. Now, but the audience, Different social media platforms are used by different groups based on their age, profession, interests, etc. And for different reasons. So you have to keep in mind about your audience. This also changes in different countries and cultures as well. So before deciding which social media platform to use, we need to consider the audience. We want to reach the most near our campaign and try to understand them. And the best way to do is by identifying specific social media user personas. Now think about the long story. Every piece of content we create and share our own, our, at our social media profiles and pages contributes to the overall story we want to tell to our audience. So it is essential to think of the overall story and its structure beforehand. Usually stories have specific characteristics such as a beginning, a middle and an end with a climax or conflict. And they typically convey some sort of moral lesson, thoughts, beliefs, or philosophy about the world and human beings. Social media storytelling is not an exception. Stick to the meaningful story. An interesting story might be enough for audiences to like our posts or tweets, but what makes them more inclined to engage and take action is a meaningful story, triggering emotions and feelings. So it is important to think of our audience values beforehand as well. What about the tone of voice? It is advisable every text we write and share on social media to use a similar type, style or tone of voice, as well as to be simple, clear, straight, to the point, welcoming and polite. Also, it is important to establish a few house rules. For example, a social media code of contact. So that everyone, when being part of our online community, is respected and has a positive experience. Social media options. In order to reach as many people as possible and attract their attention, it is, it is advisable to use the specific options that each social media platform provides. For example, use the correct hashtags and tag the right profile accounts. In addition, it is important to consult updated cheat sheets for social media image sizes and use free online image resizers for the visual content to fit in and be more appealing to the viewer. Audience engagement. Engagement is a two-way connection between us and our audience. It is a long-term relationship with all channels open for questions, feedback, and interactions on social media platforms. Audience engagement starts with the content we publish since it is the first thing that grabs people's attention and triggers them to interact with it in the form of follows, likes and shares and continues with one-to-one -one interactions in the form of comments, replies and messages and user-generated content. This second part of audience engagement waits more since it makes more time, takes more time and effort to happen and gives us the opportunity to understand our audience and the impact of our campaign better. This is why it is important for us to dedicate some time in order to actively listen and respond to our audience and provide opportunities for more interaction. For example, by sparking discussions with questions or by encouraging participation and content creation with calls to action. Try to use the tools spine for social media platforms. On social media, being regular and maintaining a consistent voice is essential for any of our campaign to be impactful. Also, it is important to measure social media engagement in order to get to know our audience better. 
Fortunately, there are many social media scheduling and analytics tools we can use for free, such as the ones provided by the social media platforms themselves or the Hootsuite. Here we have listed some links that you could go through and check these possibilities. And just with a closing remark, we would like to say that in the digital realm, the wealth of information creates the scarcity of attention. So one of the biggest challenges online is to grab people's attention. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation. And if you have questions and comments, please contact us directly. Thank you very much. And uh, if you want to learn more about the Public Makers Project, visit our website, publicmakers.eu, and also follow the Public Makers Project on our Facebook. Thank you very much. <laughs>